everyone, it's Sam here from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'm showing you how to make my favorite baked mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is the ultimate comfort food, and I'm so excited to be sharing my favorite version with you today. My macaroni and cheese is creamy and cheesy and full of flavor, and I think you are going to really love it. Now, to get started, we're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we're going to head over to the stovetop where you will need a medium-sized saucepan, and you're going to want to fill this about halfway with water. And I always like to generously salt my water. We're gonna bring our water to a boil, and once it's boiling, we are going to add our macaroni noodles. I'm actually not using macaroni noodles, I'm using kava tapi, just because they're a little bit more fun. You can use whatever shape you want, but you are going to want eight ounces. I'm gonna add this to the boiling water. So we'll bring our pasta and our water back to a boil. You're going to want to stir this occasionally just to keep that pasta from sticking to the bottom. And you're going to want to actually cook your pasta for one minute less than your packaging indicates. And the reason we want to undercook our noodles a little bit is because they're going to soften as we cook them in our oven. So having them a little bit firmer is actually really good. So once our pasta has finished cooking, we're gonna remove this from the heat. We are going to drain this. And I always return the pasta back to the pot. And I'm just gonna drizzle it with just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna use my spoon to just stir in those noodles, make sure they all get nicely coated with that olive oil. That's just gonna keep them from sticking together while we're making our cheese sauce. Now, to make our cheese sauce, you're going to need a 10 inch cast iron pan or a large pot. I actually like to use my Dutch oven. I'm gonna set this on the stove over medium heat and we'll add four tablespoons of butter. Once your butter has melted, we're going to add one fourth cup of all purpose flour. I'm just gonna whisk this in with the butter until there are no clumps and this is a nice smooth mixture. What we're actually doing here is we're making a roux. All right, now our flour and our butter are nicely combined. We don't have any lumps, so we're going to whisk in our milk. You're going to need three cups of whole milk. I'm just gonna whisk that in. And here we'll also whisk in our spices, which are going to give our mac and cheese a really good flavor, starting with a half teaspoon of salt a half teaspoon of ground black pepper, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of onion powder, and a half teaspoon of ground mustard. Now stir everything together really well, and you're going to want to stir pretty frequently while this mixture comes to a boil. You also might notice that the milk and butter are separating a little bit. This is mostly because the milk is colder than the butter. Just keep stirring it. You want to stir pretty frequently until these two are nicely combined and you can't really see the butter pieces in the milk. So once your mixture comes to a boil, we're going to actually reduce the heat on our stovetop and we're going to cook this at a simmer until it's thickened. You wanna keep stirring it pretty frequently until it's a nice thick consistency. So as you can see here, this is what we're looking for. My spoon is leaving a trail through the sauce. The mixture is coating the back of the spoon. This is the right consistency. So we're going to drop our heat all the way down to low. And now we are going to add the most important part of mac and cheese, and that is, of course, the cheese. Now you do have a little bit of freedom to play around with your preferred cheese variety here, but I'm going to share what I like to use. We're going to start with two cups of sharp cheddar, and I actually am using one cup of yellow cheddar and one cup of white. Now, ideally, you wanna shred these right off the block because most cheeses that you buy pre-packaged from the store have a thin coating over the shreds to keep them from sticking together, and that keeps them from melting properly in your mac and cheese. I'm going to add these two in with my roux. We're also going to add one and a half cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. Stir these into your roux until the cheese is melted and the sauce is nice and creamy. Once your cheese is melted, we are going to add our pasta that we drained earlier. Make sure you stir this really well until all of the noodles are completely coated with cheese. Now, if you prepared your sauce in a 10 inch cast iron, as we mentioned in the beginning, you're going to be able to cook it right in that dish. Since I put mine in my Dutch oven, I'm actually going to transfer my mac and cheese to a casserole dish. Now, this is a one and a half quart casserole dish and I've lightly buttered the bottom and the sides. So our mac and cheese is just about ready to bake right now, but there's one thing I always like adding on top of mine, and that is a lightly buttered crunchy panko topping. So to make this, we're gonna head over to our stovetop again. You're going to need a small saucepan. We're gonna set this over medium heat, and we'll add two tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil. Now stir this together until your butter is completely melted, and now we are going to add our panko crumbs. So this is one cup of seasoned panko. I'm gonna add it in with the butter. And you're just going to stir this in with the butter and the olive oil until most of the butter mixture has been absorbed by the panko and until it turns a nice toasted golden brown color. This is looking pretty good. So now we can go ahead and sprinkle this evenly over our prepared mac and cheese. All right, now we will transfer our macaroni and cheese to our 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven where it will need to bake uncovered for about 15 minutes. 
All right, our macaroni and cheese is finished baking and it's going to be a little hot right now, but I don't have the patience to wait any longer, so I'm going to go ahead and dig in. And that is how you make my all-time favorite baked macaroni and cheese. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. If you try it out, please let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Hey, if you guys enjoyed today's baked mac and cheese recipe, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, if you enjoyed today's recipe, here are a few others you might like as well.